get hacking. All right, thank you. Um, sorry about that. So we're running behind, so we're just going to move quickly. Um, who am I? My name is Justin Regal. I'm a penetration tester. I work with Tyre Security. I also do uh, some freelance development work, and that's where I um, came across what I'm going to be talking about today. So what I'm not, I'm not a Git expert. Don't ask me about rebasing. I don't know what it is. <laughs> All right. So, real fast, okay, what happens? Someone commits a nasty into a Git repository and they didn't know that it was a really bad idea. Um, why is it a bad idea? Because in the Git repo, all history of all changes are going to be in there on everyone's file system once they uh, do a Git pull or a Git fetch, um, even if it's not on the branch that they're on. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk objects in the Git database, we're gonna find what are called blobs, and then we're gonna find things that people thought were deleted. Um, we're going to use it with this tool I made called Grawler. Um, I developed this because I was actually trying to rewrite uh, the history of a Git repository because this had actually happened. And um, because it was a big repository, it was taking a long time. So I was like, why don't I write a tool that will make sure it's gone when these 36 hours are over? So it's just some bash and some Python. So um, I'm moving really fast, but because we're like 10 minutes behind, so I basically have 10 minutes for the talk. Um, Git's version control, um, if you don't know what that is, um, ask me later. So, um, <laughs> so what, like I said earlier, Git fetch, it downloads the entire history. I already covered that. So, okay, the Git database, um, it lives inside the got .git folder. You might have seen it before. Um, if you look inside the objects directory, it looks something like this. So. Git objects are referenced by these SHA-1 hashes, and so the first two characters of the SHA hash is the directory name, and then the remaining uh, part of the SHA-1 hash is the file name. So we have, we have three different types. We have trees that contain other objects. We have blobs that are the actual content of your source code, and we have commits. So we basically have a structure like this, which is very easy to walk if we're you know using software. Um, there's a tool that we're going to use that we use in Grawler. Um, it's called git cat file, and it has two really useful options, dash p and dash t. Dash p prints the file, and dash t gives us its type. Um, so I'm going to um, try and do a, a live demo here, because I'm just on top of technical difficulties. We're going to live really dangerously. All right. So... Um, Okay, so I'm in the Grawler a repo right now. So let's just look inside the Git objects um, directory. Oh, they don't have tree, great. Oh, this is someone else's computer, so we had to install a bunch of stuff. So here are our directories, right? So let's CD into, um, we're gonna go into 01, or look at this. Okay, so if we go, can everybody read this? All right, so if you go git cat, files dash t01 and then the rest of the hash it's going to tell us it's a blob that's cool so what we can do is we can just go look if we do dash p it'll actually give us okay so this is the readme file at in the inside the git database so that's basically what we do with git cat file all right we're going back over here all right so let's look at some grawler source code this is the walk tree function. This is a recursive function, and it basically uses git cat file dash t. Um, and if it finds a blob, it's going to dump the blob, which basically sends it to the extractor. Um, if it's a commit, we're basically going to look for a line that says tree in it, and we're going to cut out the hash, um, and then walk the tree with that hash. Um, otherwise, it's going to be a tree, and so it's going to have a bunch of other hashes. So we're going to we're going to cut those hashes out and walk those. Um, the extractor has a couple different modes. These aren't magic. They're basically just strings we're, we're grepping on. Um, you can do custom stuff, so you can pass in regular expressions. If you have something specific you're looking for, um, there is a functionality to do that. Um, there's a couple different modes, and what these do is they're, they're basically the starting point. So how do we get the initial group of hashes that we're going to start walking over? Um, there's the git mode, which just uses the command git log. Um, this is git's internal tool, so it will tell us what git knows about. There are also pack files, which um, whenever you've pushed to a, a git remote, you'll see that little message where it's compressing stuff that's actually doing garbage collection. So it packs a bunch of stuff into what are called pack files, which are deltas of, of each other. Um, and then there's FS mode, which 
isn't that useful right now, but it was a kind of a cool idea, so I threw it in there. Um, so I'm going to demo the Git mode right now. So let's clear this. All right, let's make a. We're making a repository, right? So it's initialized. Um, let's go like this. So say we're going to create a file, secrets config, right? Um, we're going to put a password in it because we don't know what we're doing. All right, we're going to save that. We're going to add that, and then we're going to commit it. All right. Cool. My, all right. Not you see these error messages. All right. So now, now we, someone says, oh, my gosh, you committed the password, but it's only my password. So we want to change it to something more secure. So we're going to add a one and an exclamation point. <laughs> All right, now we're going to add that again. Um, All right, so now that's added. Now what we can do is we can run Grawler. We're going to try and extract passwords. And we're going to run it in the mode of Git, right? So basically, now it's found both of those passwords in the file system. So now what we're going to do, we're like, uh, no, the, the, the solution to now is we're just going to remove that file. And then we're going to tell Git that we've removed that file. So, so now we've removed the secrets. We should be good. So if we run Grawler again, we're trying to get passwords, and we're going to run it in Git mode. And it's, they're, they're still there. Because it, they're in the history. They're going to be there. Um, all right, so that was Git mode. So pack files, I already explained kind of what that was, so we can move on. There's this uh, tool called Verify Pack, and um, I'm not going to spend much time on that. Um, so pack mode. So we say let's do, um, let's look inside the objects directory right now, right? There we have it. Um, if we look in inside the pack directory, it's going to be empty. But if we do garbage collection, now we've you know done the compression. If we look inside our Git objects directory again, it's pretty barren, but the, the pack file has now been populated. Um, so if we run git, or not git, we want to run Grawler. We're extracting passwords in pack mode. So we're, we're going to find them. We would find them in, in git mode too, but. Uh, let me open up a new tab because now. Uh, where did I clone this? Oh, we are in. Okay, catch. Cleaning commands. All right, so say we've got. If we want to rewrite our history, we're going to take this cleaning command and we're going to paste it in here. And the cleaning commands are actually in the repo on GitHub, so you can see, like, kind of what you're up against. It's uh, So say we just cleaned uh, the history now. So if we want to run Grawler, um, we're going to run it in Git mode, and it's not going to say they're there, because Git mode just uses Git log, and we've rewritten the history. But what we still have them is we still have them in the pack files. So they're still going to be there on the file system. Um, I've got like two more minutes, so I'm going to skip the stuff on FS mode. Um, and just talk about you know what your options are, countermeasures. You can rewrite your history. Um, the, the Git filter branch tool does that for you. Um, I would advise you to use the Pro Git book in Chapter 10 because um, I found stuff online like blog posts that just were not that helpful. But the caveat is that when you rewrite your history, all you're doing is rewriting the the kind of like the pointers. I guess you could call them. You still have to remove all your references and garbage to collect and everything. Um, going to skip that. Um, so I guess maybe we can have time for a question. Um, it's now hosted on GitHub. I'm Justin Regal. If you have any questions, you can talk to me, or you can ask this question now. So are you saying if I rewrite locally and I push? I, w 
I would advise maybe just killing your repo and then um, and then recloning the the revised one. I think that's where rebasing comes in if you don't want to do it. But like I said in the beginning, I don't understand that. Right. So I, this will get rid of stuff online as well. Yeah. Any more questions? All right, cool. We're done.